welcome to the AI Systems Summit Research. My name is Andy Hawk. I'm the Vice President and Head of Product at Cerebra Systems, an AI computer systems company that has built a new class of processor and computer system to accelerate AI by orders of magnitude beyond traditional systems. I'm going to be talking today about accelerating scientific discovery with wafer scale compute. So I'd like to begin by saying that AI has transformative potential for scientific discovery for a range of applications ranging from physical sciences to life sciences and healthcare, materials research, and energy development. Despite this grand potential, AI is fundamentally compute constrained today. Experiments often take weeks or months rather than minutes or hours. Existing infrastructure is challenged by these workloads at scale. These fundamental challenges and inefficiencies limit researchers' ability to quickly iterate and test new ideas. With the right high-performance AI computing system, we can enable interactive science, faster time to insight, and fundamentally new discovery. So let's take a look at this landscape of challenging compute requirements through the lens of deep learning. This chart shows the exponential growth in computing requirements, particularly for large state-of-the-art natural language processing or NLP models over the past few years. We'll look in particular at two specific examples. One, BERT Base on the bottom left, and also GPT-3 on the top right. BERT Base was introduced by Google in 2018, has approximately 110 million parameters. GPT-3 was introduced just a few years later by OpenAI and has 175 billion parameters. This represents three orders of magnitude growth in compute requirements in just a few years. And we don't see this trend waning. In the near future, it's reasonable to expect trillion parameter models or even multi-trillion parameter models or larger, all to drive work in scientific research and discovery and industry applications. Distributing these large workloads over traditional clusters has advanced the field significantly, but it's reaching its limits. This chart shows the speed up in training time to solution for state-of-the-art NLP models. Here, a transformer in the ML Perf benchmark suite, and shows the scaling of time to solution as a function of the number of chips, either GPUs or TPUs in this case, compared to perfect scaling of time to solution. And what you might think as you go from 0 to 100 to even 500 chips in a cluster, that you might get 100 or 500 times faster. But what this chart shows you, a recent publication from ACM SIGARCH, is that the time to solution maybe only gets 100 times faster at 500 chips. So distributed scaling is, is, is not the answer to all of this work. We see, as we look across the different compute workloads used for scientific research and discovery, similar trends for not just AI, but also HPC workloads, and AI and HPC converged workloads, where AI may be used for science research problems involving image processing, text or sequence modeling, HPC being used for physics-based modeling and simulation, as well as signal processing, and converged AI and HPC, where AI models may be used as surrogates for computationally expensive physics models, or where AI models may act in a partnership to augment traditional HPC workloads. The, the interesting observation here is that there are common computational demands across this landscape of workloads. All these workloads require massive, sparse, linear algebra computation, but they also require a high degree of data communication, high communication bandwidth, as well as frequent high bandwidth memory access, demanding high memory bandwidth. 
legacy general purpose processors aren't built for this kind of work. We really need a new class of processor. At Cerebrus, we designed and built the processor shown here that we call the wafer scale engine. This is the heart of our compute solution for artificial intelligence and HPC. This is our second generation device, the WSE2. It is fabricated at seven nanometer process. It is the largest chip in the world and the most powerful engine available for AI and HPC work. On the single eight and a half by eight and a half inch wafer, we have 850,000 flexible programmable cores optimized for sparse linear algebra work, 40 gigabytes of all on-chip memory, and all cores are directly connected to one another over silicon by a high bandwidth, low latency, 2D interconnect mesh. All in all, this processor delivers orders of magnitude more compute, communication bandwidth, and memory bandwidth than a traditional processor. You can think of the WSE2 effectively as a cluster scale resource, cluster scale performance in a single chip. Once we arrived at that architecture of the wafer scale engine as the right processor for this work, we had to completely rethink the system around that processor that would package, power, cool, and deliver data to that high performance engine. And for that, we built the server system shown here that we call the Cerebrus CS2. It is the world's most powerful AI computer. As you can see here, it's made to deploy easily into standard data center racks. It connects to standard power connections and connects to adjacent infrastructure over standard network. It has 1.2 terabits per second I.O. to feed the wafer scale engine with all the data that it needs to drive time to solution and time to insight down. The system itself is available for on-premise direct deployment or available through us remotely or through our cloud partners. In addition, we've built a software stack at Cerebrus that makes this high performance machine easy to program with standards based frameworks. The compiler that we've developed is shown here schematically. For deep learning and AI use cases, users simply program our machine with standard ML frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch, depicted at the left. Our compiler picks up the description of the user's training or inference program at compile time, translates that into an intermediate representation, and then compiles that down to an executable to run at high performance on the wafer scale engine transparently to the user. This gives the user the opportunity to program a cluster scale compute resource with the paradigm and the ease of a single node. In addition to the compiler stack depicted here, we've also recently announced a lower level software development kit or SDK that allows users to directly program new algorithms and applications to extend our kernel library for new types of applications on the machine. So in summary, the solution that we've developed is fundamentally an architecture that has been built from the ground up from first principles, tuned for AI and HPC work. The wafer scale engine is a massive, fine-grained, parallel machine with fully programmable cores that are optimized at the instruction level for sparse tensor-based linear algebra operations common to these workloads. We have high bandwidth, low latency, on-chip memory, one clock cycle away from all of that compute. And all of the processing engines on the wafer can talk to one another directly over silicon, over a software configurable 2D interconnect mesh. The whole machine is programmable for AI easily with standard ML frameworks, and is customizable for HPC or other applications with our lower level software development kit. But let's take a look at some real world applications to get a sense of what this architecture delivers in terms of performance 
and value for scientific discovery. In the AI domain, our first example here is from our work with GlaxoSmithKline. Is doing research on genetic medicines and development of new drugs and other life sciences research. Their goal is to accelerate the validation of drug targets using a novel technique that takes into account gene sequence and epigenomic cellular data. And for this, they're training a large natural language processing model. The challenge here is that the training of this model is very complex and time intensive on a traditional cluster. It would typically take on the order of several weeks on a 16 GPU cluster, making researchers' ability to quickly experiment with new data sets or new methods impractical. And what you see on the right is the result with Cerebris and the CS1. In recent work published by GlaxoSmithKline, uh, called Epigenomic Language Models Powered by Cerebris on Archive, they found that they could train this brand new model called Ebert in 2.5 days on a single CS1 compared to 24 days on a 16 GPU cluster. So here our first generation machine is 10 times faster than a 16 GPU cluster with even more headroom to grow on our second generation machine or the CS2. Um, and as the author stated, the training speed up here, the performance from the Cerebris solution, not only delivered faster time to solution, but enabled them to explore architecture variations in a way that would have been prohibitively time and resource intensive on a traditional GPU cluster. We're also extremely proud of the deployment of Cerebris machines as a part of the NSF-funded NeoCortex system at Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. The NeoCortex system is designed to enable interactive AI for scientific research for the broader NSF community. As shown here, the system itself includes two CS2s, recently upgraded from CS1s, as well as an HPE Superdome Flex, which is used to feed the CS2s with data at high bandwidth. The collection of resources here is designed exclusively to power interactive scientific research, allowing users to bring large scientific data sets and work with state-of-the-art models and iterate quickly through many hypotheses. The early user program at PSC, which recently concluded, included a wide range of successful user projects ranging from image-based respiratory disease diagnosis to work on molecular modeling with orders of magnitude larger atomic models, all enabled and unlocked by the Cerebris systems in neocortex. As we transition from pure AI into the realm of physics-based simulation and HPC, some of our recent work with Total Energies shows how the CS2 system and the WSE architecture can accelerate workloads associated as well with energy research. Here, Total is using a finite differences-based algorithm to conduct research on clean energy generation for a wide range of simulations, including batteries, biofuels, wind flows, drilling, and CO2 storage. The challenge associated with this workload is it requires not only massive compute but high communication bandwidth and high memory bandwidth. The result, as shown here on the right, is quite startling. They were able to use our lower level software development kit to bring up an implementation of this workload that was 200 times faster, more than 200 times faster, on the CS2 than a state-of-the-art A100 GPU. As the CEO and president of Total says, they count on the CS2 system as part of their computing infrastructure to boost their multi-energy research and give our, their research athletes that extra competitive edge to be able to more, work more quickly and uncover new insights at a faster pace. This work has also been written up, uh, is available on archive, and has been submitted to Supercomputing 2022. We're tremendously excited about the future of this energy research and other related work with Total. We also have an ongoing 
collaboration with the Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory. Here, uh, the team has been using a Cerebra CS1 and programming once again through our lower level frameworks to accelerate physics-based computational fluid dynamics, in particular bringing up an algorithm used to solve sparse linear equations for their computational fluid dynamics research of energy reactors. The results, once again, were extraordinary. Here, our first generation CS1 showed performance of 200x that of the entire Joule 2.0 supercomputer. And once again, this extraordinary performance is powered by not only the computational resources available within the wafer scale engine, but the high bandwidth memory and communication to unlock high performance, sparse gem performance. This work has been published in Archive and at SC20 as well. We look forward to additional exciting results as we move toward real-time computational fluid dynamics in entirely new physics-based simulation applications with Nettle. Continuing on, we also have been witnessing a huge growth in demand for AI converged with HPC. A great example of this work is the work that we've done with our colleagues at Lawrence Livermore National Labs, where a Cerebrus system has been integrated with the world-class Lassen supercomputer. This is truly a first of its kind, heterogeneous system that's optimized not just for AI or HPC, but for converged AI and HPC workloads. Lassen has 792 CPUs, over 3,000 GPUs and 44 racks. Here, a first generation CS1 is connected to Lassen over 1.2 terabit per second connection over InfiniBand. And the CS1 is being used here to run an autoencoder deep neural network that approximates the physics of the underlying physics simulation that Livermore researchers are performing. The so full scale physics simulation is being executed on Lassen. Results are being driven out to the CS1 for neural network computation. And results are being driven back to Lassen from CS1 to inform the next time step in the simulation. The CS1 in this case was up and running out of the box, integrated in under 20 hours. The CS1 itself delivers 64x the performance on its deep neural network workload than a, jet, a Lassen GPU and opens the doors to completely new experiments at the NIF facility. Last but certainly not least, we've seen some extraordinary results in converged AI and HPC with our colleagues at Argonne National Labs who are using AI augmented molecular dynamics to accelerate research into COVID-19. Here, the team at ANL is using the CS2 to accelerate deep neural network compute to inform the next step in a molecular dynamics simulation being executed on a traditional cluster of machines for supercomputing. The model running on CS2 is a convolutional variational autoencoder that can be complex and sometimes prohibitive to train on other infrastructure. The results shown here on the right from a recent publication show the CS2 delivers the performance of approximately 100 GPUs for this kind of work. And researchers were able to run this CVAE model with the same experimental configuration as GPU without any hyperparameter changes so they could get up and running right away and achieve a time to solution significantly faster than would be possible on a traditional cluster. So, in conclusion, thank you. We're really excited to be a part of the AI Systems Summit research. Today, we've talked a little bit about the growing compute demands, not just for AI, but also for HPC and converged AI and HPC workloads associated with scientific research and discovery. We see exponential growth in data sets, model size, and compute that can be challenging for traditional systems. Here, the wafer scale innovations and compute of the Cerebrus CS2 
unlock truly transformative potential and performance, delivering orders of magnitude more performance for these workloads than traditional machines like GPU, resulting in time to solution rather than days and weeks to minutes and hours, and giving researchers access to this performance with a simple standards-based programming model and the programming ease of a single machine. We recently announced version 1.2 of our software, which includes expanded support for PyTorch deep learning framework, as well as initial support for billion parameter models on a single device. But this is just the beginning. In the near term future, we'll be announcing software support for tens to hundreds of billion of parameter models that also can be accelerated with multi CS2 clusters. Imagine the possibilities. For example, training order 100 billion parameter models in just a few weeks, or potentially in the future, training trillion parameter models over the weekend. The possibilities here are really endless. And we, as hardware builders at Cerebris, are building this system and future systems as tools to accelerate the important scientific research that you and the community here at the AI Systems Summit are driving forward. So thank you for your time. Happy to answer any questions in the conference. And of course, if you're interested to learn more about Cerebris or the CS2, you can get access to systems either on premise, through our partners, through us remotely, uh, or through the Cerebris cloud at Zeroscale. Um, you're welcome, of course, to reach out and learn more. You can contact our ML enablement team online at Cerebris.net. Thank you. Yeah.